welcome to Hair of the Rabbit podcast. We explore everything that is rabbit. We look at different rabbit breeds, history, superstition, pop culture, news, and more. I would like to thank you for joining me today, your host, Jeff Hittinger. I'm not an expert. I'm just curious about learning more about rabbits, just like you. This week, we're going to discuss the Polish rabbit breed. This breed is known as the Little Aristocrat as this is a little regal little rabbit breed. I found a lot of helpful information about the Polish rabbit breed on the American Polish Rabbit Club or APRC website and we'll have a link to that in the show notes. The Polish rabbit is a dwarf breed of domestic rabbit most often bred by fanciers and commonly exhibited in rabbit shows. Again we come across a breed that sounds like it's from one place other than what its name implies. And despite its name, the Polish rabbit originated in England and not Poland. One of these days, I think I'm going to have to list off breeds with a name from one place, but actually come from another, because this is getting a little crazy now. A few updates. This weekend, Saturday, was a beautiful 65 degree day in central Virginia, and I worked on updating my rabbit hutch system. The first hutches I purchased are starting to need repair, as the bottoms are rusting through from rabbit urine. My most recent hutch system is freestanding cages with a 4x8 roof. There are only two hutches per rack underneath that 4x8 roof, so I'm working on installing a second row below. So far, I've found this to be the best system for me without converting a shed. And I'm only looking about, I only want to have about eight rabbit holes and one to grow out, one or two grow out hutches. I'm not sure what I'll do with the other three hutches that I have that are in need of repairs. What I'm thinking is I'm going to clean them up, repair them, and sell them in the spring. Now, this weekend past, the family and I went to see the Terracotta Army in Richmond, so I apologize for taking a week off. I've been working many more hours at my 8-6 to six job and finding that I'm tired of looking at the computer at nights when I should be working on the podcast. Just want to let you know that I have no plans of pod fading, which is when a podcast is abandoned, because I still enjoy learning about rabbits. This coming weekend, the first weekend in February 2018, the family and I are going to Pittsburgh to see Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania to see a performance. So if you're in the Pittsburgh area and would like to meet up for a beer or coffee, I'd love to meet with you. Just shoot me an email. Now the weather forecast for Pittsburgh is snow and cold. Imagine that during February. But during the same time, we will be in Pittsburgh. My parents are going on a Caribbean cruise. So I think they have the right idea there. Now on to our breed this week. As I said, I received a lot of information about this breed from the American Polish Rabbit Club. And one article on the site is titled A Historical Perspective on Polish Rabbit by Grant Olson. So I took quite a bit of information from that article, but I also added to it. There are a number of possible scenarios put forth as to the origins of the Polish breed of rabbit. The ruby-eyed whites were the first variety of Polish. They probably originated in England and Germany, but definitely not in Poland. Despite its name, the Polish rabbit breed has its origins in England, and it may have been offspring of an albino Dutch rabbit. In the early 1800s, a few white rabbits of small size, and probably of mixed origins, popped up in England, and breeders began calling them Polish. We'll never know why they decided to call them this, call them by this name. It is thought that it was developed by breeding a Dutch and Himalayan rabbit dating back to the 1600s. By the 1900s, they were one of the most popular meat breeds in Europe, especially in Belgium. These rabbits eventually made their way to America around 1912 and were used to source other breeds, such as the Netherland Dwarf. Soon after, the Polish rabbit was accepted by the American Rabbit Breeders Association. The Polish rabbit were first mentioned in, Eng in English rabbit raising literature by 1860. In 1884, 17 Polish were exhibited in Hull, England. One source noted that the breeder developed them from wild rabbits. Other breeders worked with albinos from small silver albinos from the Dutch breed or possibly albinos from the Himalayan rabbits to develop their strain of Polish. The Polish rabbit was known as the Hutch rabbit and was mentioned in one source as being a very common breed in, in English rabbitries. Now the red-eyed white Polish. According to an article written by Samuel E. Rice in 1952 APRC Guidebook, W.E. Dexter of Boston, Massachusetts imported the Polish rabbit in 1912. The ruby-eyed whites 
were the only recognized variety by the National Pet Stock Association for many years. Judge John Walter Verdon, in an article for the magazine Rabbit World, said the Rue Polish rabbit looked like a miniature New Zealand white. Some Polish breeders imported some of the best stock from England to import to improve their Polish herds, but were greatly disappointed in the animal's type and overall appearance. American breeders were able through selective breeding to develop ruby-eyed whites that were not racy or block in type. The blue-eyed whites. In 1938, the American Rabbit and Cabby Breeders Association recognized the blue-eyed white variety of Polish. Mr. Samuel E. Rice of Saugus, Massachusetts is credited with the development of this variety. In 1920, he had purchased six red eye, ruby eyed white does and three ruby eyed white bucks from W.E. Dexter, and he used a 2.5 pound ruby eyed white buck bred to two 8 pound Beveren does, blue eyed white Beveren does. Now, we've covered the Beveren on a past podcast episode, and I'll have a link to that in the show notes. Now for Samuel E. Rice's breeding, it required three generations of crossing half-brother to half-sister before he was able to produce pure whites with blue eyes. His first show with the blue-eyed whites resulted in a bob out of 60 Polish. Judge Welter Verden wrote in his article on the Polish rabbit that blue-eyed white Polish were shown at the 1919 World Exhibition in Leipzig, Germany. These breeders use the same type of cross to develop their strain of blue-eyed white Polish. The black and chocolate Polish. Various colored varieties of Polish were beginning to show up in the United States around 1932. Mr. Samuel E. Rice is credited with being the breeder behind the development of the chocolate and black varieties. He developed these two colors by initially using a 2.5 pound red-eyed white buck, a Havana doe with a small black Rex buck. Now, in a past episode, we covered the Havana rabbit breed, and I will leave a link to this episode in the show notes as well. And there's another rabbit breed that uh, has a place in the name that it's not from. We have not covered the Rex rabbit yet, and I have a Rex rabbit that we call Moo, so maybe it's time to cover this breed. The Blacks and Chocolates were thought to have had an American Rabbit Breed Association working standard around 1947. A number of other Polish breeders were known to have colored Polish. Mrs. Jack Ross and John Melizzo, and this was in 1948 and 52. F.A. Arnold, Arnold Wolf, Floyd Tobias, Austin Gaver, William F. Thompson, Frank Call, Andrew Bain, Charles A. Henry, the Cushing Brothers, and Alan L. Mitchell. In Alan Mitchell's article for the 1957 APRC guidebook, he mentioned that one breeder had developed red Polish using a New Zealand red and a ruby-eyed white Polish cross. Some breeders used Polish crosses, Polish Dutch crosses as well as solid black sports from English spots to produce varied colors. Miss Jack Ross, the, um, the APRC secretary, used ruby-eyed white and a Havana cross to produce her black and chocolate Polish as noted in in an article written by her for Small Stock magazine in 1949. Another very prominent breeder of colored Polish was Judge Carlton Gatiss of of Indiana. He acquired his initial stock from Charlie Henry of Saugus, Massachusetts around 1954. He developed a black strain that consistently produced show winners and competed equally with the red-eyed whites. The Blue Polish The blue variety of Polish proved to be the more contentious of the varieties to get approved. They were first introduced in 1977 American Rabbit Breeders Association Convention in Houston, Texas. Lois Liebman of California was the variety sponsor. Her blue strain originated from a chocolate buck from L.B. Miller. In an ad in the 1966 ARP, APRC guidebook, John Melazo of New York is credited with the first development of blues around 1948. Carlton Gatiss also had blues showing up in his blacks around 1954. This variety had been around for a number of years. The issue for the APRC membership at the time was a concern with what was happening with the Netherland Dwarfs and their large number of varieties. Members were seeking a lack of quality in these 
Netherland dwarf varieties and did not want the Polish breed to lose the quality achieved thus far by continually additions of new varieties. Also, there was confusion about the differences between the two breeds by some judges. Members wanted to ensure that the Polish remained distinctly Polish and by adding new varieties might jeopardize keeping these two breeds unique. The APRC membership did not approve the variety on the first vote. However, the membership continued to discuss the merits of the blue variety in the APRC newsletter. Breeders of the variety were exhibiting them at the show so other members could see the quality of the animals in this new variety. A second vote was requested and the APRC membership approved the blues as the fifth Polish variety in 1982. The Broken Polish The Broken Variety of Polish was approved in 1998. Gail Gimmons of Cedar Lake, Minneapolis is credited with starting a, the development of the Broken in 1985. She used a black broken Holland Lop with poor ear carriage to introduce the broken pattern into her Polish. She bred him to black and chocolate does. She continued then breeding brokens to solids. Judge Larry Bengston initially viewed her efforts. He said they were further along in development than the most first showing animal seen at the convention. The broken first showing was to have occurred in at the 1990 American Rabbit Breeders Association Convention in Tampa, Florida. However, because of a miscommunication between the Standards Committee and Gail Gibbons, the first showing did not occur. The black, chocolate, and blue broken varieties were needed for the exhibit. She decided not to continue with the certificate of development. Judge Rene Gutierrez of Minnesota bought Gail Gibbons broken stock. She gave Trevor Sapinski of Brainerd, Minnesota, a, ni a very nice black broken buck. Trevor decided to continue the development of the broken variety. He bred this buck to black, chocolate, and blue varieties in his herd. They were first shown to the American Rabbit Breeders Association Committee in 1993, with final approval coming in 1999. Trevor started raising Polish as a youth member in 1988. The lilac variety is now in the process of gaining recognition. Enlo Walker of Arkansas was the initiator of this effort. Now we're going to cover the breed description a little bit more in depth. Today, the American Polish rabbit is used as fancy exhibition breed and pets. They are small rabbits with short ears that touch each other all the way to the tips. They should have a short head with full cheeks and bold eyes. Due to their small size, the Polish rabbit is often confused with the Netherland dwarf, although the Polish is a little larger and the head is not rounded. There are many other differences between the two breeds, such as coat structure, body type, and color. The accepted weights of the Polish rabbit at six months or older are 2.5 to 3.5 pounds. The ideal weight is about 2.5 pounds. Until the 1950s, most American Polish rabbits were white and with either red or blue eyes. The ruby-eyed white is a true albino. The blue-eyed white has the Vienna gene. The Vienna white gene is not a true albino. Since the 1950s, colored Polish breeds have been recognized by the rabbit clubs. In 1957, the American Rabbit Breeders Association approved the black and chocolate Polish. In 1982, the blue variety was approved, and in 1999, the broken variety was allowed. Polish first made their way to the United States around 1912, Breeders have come a long way since then in improving the type of the original imported animals. Large, bold, expressive eyes are a distinctive feature of the breed. As we covered in the history, there are six different varieties accepted in Polish today. The ruby-eyed white, blue-eyed white, black-blue chocolate, and broken pattern. Breeders have an excellent opportunity to try his or her breeding skills to come up with the right rabbit to win best of breed. In the United Kingdom, the American Polish is unknown. Polish rabbits in Britain are the breed known as the Britannia Petite in the United States. The Polish rabbits love attention and will happily let you pick them up. The Polish rabbit has a short, soft flyback fur that is easy to, to maintain in comparison to other breeds, which have longer wool, such as an Angora, for, for example. To keep it maintained, you should groom your rabbit once a week or bi-weekly. During the spring or when they start to shed, you may want to increase your grooming to twice a week in order to keep your house or cages fur free. Due to the small size, Polish rabbits need less space in cage and barn facilities and take up less space in apartments than some of the larger breeds. 
Cage bottoms should not be slippery as this can cause hip injuries and splay legs. Your indoor rabbit enclosures should be made of wire. Be large enough for your rabbit to comfortably stretch out and have a plastic metal bottom that, that's covered in comfortable bedding, uh, such as ho a horse bedding. The bedding needs to be spot cleaned every day and completely replaced every week. The American Polish rabbit is generally calm and friendly, especially the bucks. Does can be territorial if they haven't been spayed. Children should always be supervised when handling rabbits to ensure that the rabbit is not inadvertently injured. Rabbits can easily can be easily trained to use a litter box and to accept a harness with a leash when they're out of their cage. Rabbit proofing a room where a rabbit is roaming freely is critical. Rabbits will chew on carpets, baseboards, and especially electrical cords. Now we've covered an episode about house, house rabbits and I'll leave a link in the show notes for you to refer to. Polish rabbits should be fed about a quarter to a half cup of pelleted food every day depending on the activity level of the rabbit. Treats such as fruit and carrots should be fed sparingly, typically a portion no longer than the tip of the thumb. Fresh young dandelion leaves, parsley, and spinach are nutritious choices for treats. Vegetables in the cam cabbage family and high sugar foods such as corn should be avoided as these can cause gastritinitis. Research what kind of fruits, vegetables, and greens are rabbit friendly. If you're not sure if a particular food can be eaten, the rule of thumb is simply not to give it to them. Do not feed your rabbits yard clippings, as grass can be treated with fertilizers, insecticides, pesticides, and other chemicals that can harm your rabbit. A healthy rabbit should be well-fleshed, but not flabby. This is tested by running one's hands over the rabbit's back. A firm layer of flesh over the ribs and spine together with the ribs and spine should be felt, indicating proper nutrition. A prominent spine indicates undernutrition and is corrected by increasing the feed. Inability to feel the spine indicates overnutrition and likewise the amount of feed should be de decreased. As with other rabbits, Polish rabbits do not do well in high temperatures, but can withstand low temperatures if they are kept dry and out of drafts. They are prone to hairballs, obstructions, they are prone to hairball obstructions and matted coats if not cared for properly. Other health concerns include ear mites, pasture land, respiratory disease, dental problems, urinary bladder stones, and fractured backs. Be quick to notice any changes in diet or litter hat box habits and contact your rabbit veterinarian immediately. The average lifespan of a breeding Polish rabbit is five to six years. Now we've covered the now we're going to cover clubs and we've covered the uh, American the American Polish Rabbit Club and that boasts members across the across uh, the United States and Canada. James Blythe obtained Polish during the early 1930s and called a small group of breeders together to form the National Polish Federation at the New Haven, Connecticut Convention in 1935. Blythe was the elected president and a Douglas Clark of Long Island, New York, as the first secretary. James Blythe, James Blythe gave up the Polish breed after becoming ill in 1939, giving his Polish to William H. Kennedy. Interest in Polish waned, and the organization regrouped in 1943, changing the name to the American Polish Rabbit Club and chartered in January 1944 by the American Rabbit Breeders Association. The APRC members have the privilege of competing in the annual sweepstakes contest, which measures to a degree the success of members exhibiting at local, state, and national all-breed and Polish specialty shows. The APRC publishes a quarterly newsletter, which is called The uh, Little Aristocrat. Publication submission dates are available for those interested in contributing articles or reports of benefit to the membership. And we have the, a link to that in our uh, show notes. If you would like to email me, reach out at hairoftherabbit at gmail.com, or you can visit the website at hairoftherabbit.com. If you would like to support the podcast and keep the lights on, you can support us whenever you use Amazon through the link at the website on the support the podcast page. This will not cost you anything extra, and I cannot see who purchased what. You can also become a Fluffle fan supporter by donating through Patreon. And again, there's a link at the hair of the rabbit podcast .com.